Hey guys, welcome to Prague. Working as guides in Prague for many years, we've been asked a lot of questions by our clients. And today we decided to pick six most common questions that we get asked on our tours. So without any further ado, let's start. The Czech people are not very religious. According to the last census in 2011, 80% of them are non-religious, mostly atheist, 10% are Catholic, and the remaining 10% are all the other religions. And uh, we are one of the most non-religious countries in the world. Despite of that, most churches are still active, mostly Roman Catholic. Christianity was introduced to the Czech lands in the year 863, when two priests from the Byzantine Empire, Saint Constantine and Saint Methodius, came to the Czech lands. They were invited by the local ruler uh, to spread Christianity here. So there's the introduction of Christianity to the Czech lands. It was relatively peaceful until the end of 14th century when Jan Hus came around. Jan Hus was a Czech reformer of church and he started to criticize the church for the accumulation of wealth and money and uh, power and he criticized the church for the fact that it was all about uh, power and hierarchy and uh, in 1415 he was killed by the catholic church they put him on a pike and burned him as a heretic and four years later in 1419 a civil war broke out when the followers of Jan Hus who called themselves Husits, Husites they threw out councillors and the mayor of the new town out of the window of the new town town hall, which is called the first defenestration of Prague and started a civil war. The civil war lasted for 17 years until 1436. And after the war ended, half of the Czech people were Protestants, half were Catholic. This remained until 1526, when uh, we became part of the Austrian empire and the Austrians were 100% Catholic and they wanted us to be like them. They wanted us to be Catholic and to uh, check religious rights were oppressed and uh, this resulted in a, another defenestration, the third defenestration of Prague uh, in 1619 when the Czech Protestants went up to the castle and threw out the two representatives of the Habsburg monarchy out of the uh, Prague castle uh, palace window and uh, started another war, this time the Thirty Years' War, which was a major conflict between Protestants and Catholics all over Europe, and it started here in Prague. And uh, we lost in that war. You know, in 1620, there was a big battle of the White Mountain, and White Mountain is located uh, in the western part of Prague, and the Austrian Catholics crushed the Czech Protestants, and after that, everybody was forced to be Catholic. If you had a nobleman, they gave you a choice. You could either leave the country or adopt Christianity, uh, adopt uh, Catholicism. If you were peasant, then you had to become Catholic. And uh, in 1650, they built this column with Virgin Mary on top, which is a symbol of the Catholic religion. It was donated to the citizens of Prague to say thank you for the successful defense of the old town against the Swedes in 1648, right at the end of the Thirty Years' War. Now, uh, in 1918, when we became independent on 28 October 1918, the Czech people, there was an angry mob of people who took down this column. They took it down with a truck. And then the same mob was heading to the Charles Bridge. They wanted to throw all the statues of saints into the water. So this shows the mentality of people back then for whom uh, the Catholic Church became sort of like a symbol of the Austrian uh, occupation and the oppression. And uh, this column was reinstalled in 2020. So after 102 years after it was taken down. So then during communism also religion was oppressed, but uh, this fact that we are one of the most non-religious countries in the world has to do more with the conflicts between Protestants and Catholics rather than the communist regime. Because you can look at Poland, for example, and they're very Catholic and they were just as communist as we were. Mm -hmm. 
The Czech people speak Czech language, which is a Slavic language. Uh, particularly, it's part of the Western Slavic languages, along with Slovakian and Polish. So it's very similar to these two languages. But it's also similar, but a little bit less, to Russian, Ukrainian, and then Serbian, Croatian, and uh, all the other Slavic languages. Now, Czech language, according to one American linguistic study, uh, it, it was rated as the fifth most difficult language in the world to learn. And uh, there are certain letters, for example, the letter Z, that's unique to the Czech language. Try saying Now guys, let's have a look inside the municipal library. We'll see some modern art inside. So here we have this huge column made out of 8,000 books. And if you look inside, it's actually infinite. So come have a look. So tadelnik is a cone made out of dough and you put it on a, a pole called trdlo and you grill it, you smear it with milk while you're grilling it and then you cover it with sugar and cinnamon. That's the traditional way of doing it. So tadelniks are made uh, all over the Czech Republic in touristic spots, you know, and you see mostly tourists eat them, locals don't eat them as much. They're very traditional in Hungary. Originally they're from Transylvania, which was part of Hungary, now it's uh, Western Romania, and they spread from there all over the Austro-Hungarian Empire. However, in Bohemia, where we are, they're not traditional at all. So what you see, mostly they advertise it as like uh, old Bohemian traditional trdlo, which is a complete nonsense. First of all, they're not old Bohemian, and trdlo is the pole, it's the trdelnik is that cone of dough. So. Uh, yeah, you see them all over Prague today. So in the Czech Republic, we use uh, our own currency called the Czech crowns, Česká koruna. So we don't use, use Euro, although we are members of the EU. We became a member in 2004 and part of the deal was to accept the currency. However, it wasn't stipulated when exactly. So since 2004, we're still postponing it and, and postponing it uh, all the time. And uh, it is because majority of Czech people don't want Euro. They're afraid of it. And the politicians simply follow what the people want. Uh, the downside of not having Euro, especially for tourists, is that you have to exchange your money when you come here uh, for, for, to the Czech crowns. And a lot of the exchange offices offer really bad rate even though it says like 0% commission, they'll give you like 16 crowns for one euro. Uh, so always make sure that uh, the rate is at least 25 crowns per, uh, per euro and 0% uh, commission or close to the 25. This one here is for example pretty good and it's only like 100 meters away from the Old Town Square. So uh, you can use this one, you can use the one at Palladium Shopping Mall or in the street Politický Vězňu. So another option how to get Czech crowns is to withdraw them from an ATM. Uh, however, especially in the city center, some of the ATMs will offer, offer you to withdraw some ridiculous amounts like 20,000 Czech crowns will be like 800 euros. So uh, be careful of that. And also when you withdraw it, it's going to ask you, do you want to use the ATM's conversion rate? So with conversion rate or without, so you're going to press without because if you use the ATM's conversion rate, it's going to charge you more money because that's how the ATMs make money. You know, they'll give you a really bad conversion rate, especially company Euronet. It's infamous for giving like bad rates. So use without conversion. The last kings that ruled in the Czech lands were from the Habsburg family. They ruled here from 1526 until 1918. 
Since 28 October 1918, when Czechoslovakian Republic was founded, we have only presidents, no more kings. And the descendants of the last royal family, the Habsburgs, they still live in Austria. Behind me you can see what was the, the Prague Castle that was the seat of the Czech kings. Uh, during the Habsburg rule, only one Habsburg chose Prague Castle as its uh, as the capital of the Austrian Empire. It was Rudolf II at the end of uh, 16 and beginning of 17th century. And uh, otherwise there were only Habsburg ministers residing in the castle. And since 1918 uh, is the seat of the Czech presidents. Prague is very safe. According to the British Institute for Economy and Peace, in 2020, the Czech Republic was ranked as the eighth most secure country in the world, ahead of countries such as Japan, Switzerland or Sweden. So generally speaking, it is quite safe to walk around Prague even at night. Just uh, be aware of pickpockets, especially in crowded touristic areas. Now, if it's so safe, why do we have this security control here? That's actually because Mr. Zeman, I would say he's a little bit paranoid and uh, he wants to have a heavy security. He's turning Prague Castle into a fortress, although he doesn't even live here. He lives outside of Prague in a palace in Lani. So it doesn't really make sense. And I think the next president will remove it. All right, guys, so these were the six most common questions that we tour guides get asked on our tours. So I hope we answered them well enough. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check our website, lucytours.com. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you on our next tour. So have a good one.